The police met them with tear gas and water cannons, but they made it through and have now set up camp in and around Delhi. This guys, this is an older video. This is all the way back from December when it first occurred. Okay, or when it first started, pretty much, uh, or when it was heating up, but. We are going to, um, we are going to, uh, I'm going to give you more updates on things that have happened since then, but this is it's just a good uh, refresher. Prime Minister Modi's government has passed new farming laws that will change how the agricultural industry has worked for decades. And in a country of 1.4 billion people, where agricultural workers make up half of the labor force, the repercussions of those laws could be devastating. In the 1960s, India, a recently independent country, was struggling to produce enough food for its citizens. A string of droughts made things worse, causing devastating famines. So the government stepped in to modernize farming and increase the food supply in what was called the Green Revolution. They brought in U.S. advisors to help boost the production of rice and wheat. Together, they ended up overusing chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and irrigation, causing large plots of land to become infertile. Many crops suffered. Some nearly disappeared. But rice and wheat production soared. And soon, India went from having a food crisis to having a food surplus. It was in this context that India also developed a nationwide food marketing system to ensure fair prices. It's a complex system, and it differs from state to state, but here's one way to understand it. It starts with farmers bringing their crops here, to wholesale markets locally known as mundis. The farmers then sell those crops to traders through open auctions with transparent pricing. Prices can also be informed by the Minimum Support Price, or MSP, a government price for crops like rice, cotton, wheat. The government only buys a couple of crops at these prices in certain states, but those prices can still serve as a benchmark. The crops then go to secondary market or are stored by the buyers before they are sent out for future sales. It's not a perfect system though. Local traders uh, do end up colluding with each other. Uh, the auctions actually are not competitive bidding. But for the most part, the system works on a large scale because there's oversight that aims to protect farmers by giving them market standards. They've been designed keeping in mind the fact that farmers are the weakest link and they can be exploited in numerous ways. Over the years, state reforms have gradually redefined and regulated markets in different ways across India. In Punjab and Haryana, for example, they have become a vital part of the industry and farmers here have the highest incomes in the country. But in the state of Bihar, markets were eliminated in 2006 and the farmers here are still ranked the poorest in India by income. And all of this is happening while there's a bigger farming crisis. The money in farming is disappearing. Since the days of the Green Revolution, agriculture has gone from accounting for nearly 50% of the economy to just 15. Meaning millions of farmers already have trouble making ends meet in this shrinking economy. More than half of India's farming households are in debt. And this debt has contributed to a suicide crisis. In the last two years, more than 20,000 farmers have died by suicide. Because of this economic hardship, farmers have been asking for reforms for decades. But this year, instead of providing more protections for this vulnerable community, the central government went in the opposite direction. And farmers fear that the direction in which the reforms are happening are actually a direction of dismantling of the MSP. So let's take a look at these three farming acts that sparked the protest. Each of them deregulates a different part of the system. The first act creates free, unregulated trade spaces outside the markets. The laws in these spaces would override wholesale market rules. And although a lot of trade takes place outside already, what happens in the markets remains a benchmark across the industry. 
But this act will create two parallel markets with very different rules, one with oversight and another that creates room for big corporate players to come in unregulated. And in this dual market structure, the players in the regulated markets are bound to move out and operate in the deregulated spaces. And that is where farmers are going to lose out when these traditional spaces collapse onto themselves. The second act creates a framework for contract farming deals. Any business agreements would be strictly between farmers and traders with little oversight, giving farmers few options to fight bad deals. As these agreements increase outside of wholesale markets, they could further fragment the market and leave small farmers dependent on terms set by big corporations or be cut out of the industry altogether. Oh, sorry, the sorry, the fail ho gaya. Us to baad ina ne aapda rate te shuru kar datta hai. Holi holi us rate nu pata honge. Fir us to baad puri the puri. Neo liberals be like, I don't understand. It seems like they're gonna get priced out. Why are they constantly relying on government uh, to to back their their um, dying industry? I, I don't. I see no problem with this. The third act affects a different part of the chain. It eliminates the storage limits previously set by the government to control prices. Unlimited storage means that anyone with enough money can stock up. The problem is, without oversight, they can also start dictating prices. Altogether, the three acts invite big players into a fragmented and deregulated market that could lead to volatile prices for farmers. And by deregulating the market, there will never be a there will never be a deregulated market. The market will always be de, de, the market will always be regulated by the biggest player. If it's not the government, it's going to be whatever the fucking uh, big like agra companies are in India. They will set the prices for whatever you can fucking uh, whatever they want to pay uh, for it. Sounds like they're creating a vacuum for industrial farming to take over. Yes. Markets. The government has also put out a message in the same breath, essentially saying that they think farmers don't need any protection anymore from the government. On June 3rd, 2020, when the government announced the farming reforms, it didn't take long for the impact to be felt on the ground. Wholesale markets around the country have already seen fewer crops arrive in their market yards. In the state of Madhya Pradesh, more than 40 markets have lost business. Trading has moved out of regulated market spaces, and it is not as though good prices are being fetched by farmers. And this is the context in which farmers' anger has to be understood. They didn't get what they wanted, and what was thrust down upon them is very different from what they were asking for. के किसानों को इस कानून की जरूरत नहीं थी इस कानून को रद्द किया जाए और जो हमारी मीटिंगें हुई हमारे नेताओं की उनके साथ उसमें वो एक बात बोलते हैं वो छल करते हैं इना दे विचो असि ये चीजें सीखियां हैं साडे गांव आने वाली पीढ़ियां नु भी बच्चों नु भी एक गल दस रहे हैं कि तुसी अपने हकों के लिए लड़ना जड़ा है वाजिब है एक चिड़ी है ओदा जेकर कोई आलना भी तोड़दा है ते ओ चिड़ी भी चैं चैं करती रौला पौंदी है so who are the big players that are, uh, I assume, pushing for uh, this kind of deregulation in India? Because this video did not talk about it too much. Life like scenes in the heart of um, also, th th so this is early stuff. Uh, this is just like a, a refresher. So uh, it just background, Reliance, Adani, etc. No, not BJP and Modi. I'm BJP and Modi doesn't deregulate uh doesn't deregulate the the uh agricultural industry this way uh, purely for fucking uh anger or spite. It's uh, oftentimes done for a specific purpose for uh, larger players to move in and take over the market and start setting prices. So, who is the person behind Modi or uh pushing Modi to to, to take this sort of action? That's the real question. There's this Indian market near me taking donations and rational process is pretty crazy. Have you talked about what is happening in Merrick Garland's confirmation? Ambani, owner of Reliance.
Oh yeah, then Reliance all on Bonnie business and also Nestle. The Bharti Janta Party is pushing for it. And they asked the top companies like Reliance. I am from India. Um, hold on. My local pastor is doing the stimulus challenge where challenges the church to donate their stimulus check to him. Okay, dude, it, it, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop, stop. Let's keep going on this. Um, so since then, protests heated up. Um, I think, what was it? Uh, what, how many people has, have died so far? I believe, like, uh, online districts, uh, or, or online access was suspended in at least 14 of the 22 districts in the Haryana state near New Delhi until 5 p.m. This was back, uh, this was, uh, wet, uh Ah, ah, I can't even fucking talk. Holy shit. Um, this is from the latest uh, info coming in from uh, CNN, which uh, I think this is from yesterday, but this is the fucking link that Rihanna posted that everybody got mad at. Got 253,000 uh, retweets. They shut the fucking internet off? How is that legal? Yeah, the Kashmir region says uh, hello. India fucking shuts off internet all the goddamn time. They do shit like that when they want to. It is entirely different. Their, their, their form of governance there is, is not like the United States. Anyway. Internet access remain blocked on Monday. You need to look at why they're saying it's good from their perspective and debunk that. Please look both sides. I mean, I can give you the both sides argument. The other side's argument is that this will be better for this is fair pricing, that government intervention doesn't work, that this is too expensive of an endeavor, there's too much waste, and that, uh, you know, whoever the fucking big player is is going to do a much better job. Look at how efficient it's going to be. And it will be efficient. It will be efficient in terms of, uh, in terms of, of, of rice or agricultural production. It'll be efficient in terms of distribution. But unfortunately, efficiency under capitalism does not mean what is the best for the people itself. So many farmers will be priced out. So many farmers will no longer be able to make money as a consequence of this. And we're talking, because it's fucking India, we're, do, we're not talking like 50,000 people. We're talking a million people. We're talking 250,000 people. Do you understand? And then on top of that, um, the... the This happens everywhere, by the way. Like, this isn't just a India uh, issue. This is not an issue that is just in India. This happens everywhere around the world uh, where, where there is uh, government regulation uh, over... I mean, there is government uh, control over a lot of the, the pricing, or at least, like, pricing uh, subsidies are built into the pricing itself. There's different ways of influencing how uh, agricultural production works. There's always some form of centralized planning for it. We do it here in the United States as well. But in the United States, like, it's completely already in the fucking hands of uh, big business. Not 250,000, 250 million. Sorry, I don't know why I said 1,000. In India, you got to fucking 100x everything. Or 1,000x everything. Yeah, they say everything's bigger in Texas, but everything's actually bigger in India. Um, even their fascism. A uh, uh, 48-hour internet shutdown was also imposed on three other areas in the Delhi borders late on Friday, with India's Ministry of Home Affairs saying the move was the, in the interest of maintaining public safety and averting public emergency, like Robin Hood saying, uh, this is in your interest not to be able to buy, uh, artificially causing the price to fucking decrease of uh, GME stocks. You know, there it's in your best interest to not be able to tweet out when we're beating the shit out of your protesters. Um, according to visuals, those blackouts should have been lifted on Sunday night, but Ramjit Singh Katyal, a spokesperson for the Samyukta Kisan Morcha, an umbrella body representing protesting farmers, said the internet was still not working as of Monday. Demonstrators gathered at the Singhu border as a farmer protests against new farm laws. Internet restrictions came after violent scenes last week as demonstrators continue against three agricultural laws uh, passed in September. Since late November, hundreds of thousands of protesters were gathered on the outskirts of New Delhi. 
to demonstrate against uh, charges they say they, uh, they weren't consulted on and which will hurt their livelihoods. On Tuesday last week, a national holiday known as Republic Day that marks the anniversary of the enactment of the country's constitution, thousands of protesters stormed New Delhi's historic red fort as police used tear gas and batons against the demonstrators. Dozens of officers were injured and one protester died when a tractor overturned during the protest near the New Delhi police headquarters. Police said Wednesday, more than 100 protesters are still missing, some Yukta Kisan Morcha said Sunday. An internet shutdown was also imposed in new areas. Um, Darshan Paul who is the SKM, uh, a leader from SKM, condemned the internet shutdowns, calling the moves undemocratic. The government does not want the real facts to reach protesting farmers, nor their peaceful conduct to reach the world. Um, it wants to spread its false spin around farmers. It is also fearful of the coordinated work of the farmers' unions across different protest sites, and it's trying to cut off communication between them. Uh, communication means between them. By the way, a lot of these dudes are literal communists. For the record, for those of you who uh, get, get triggered by the sight of like hammer and sickle and shit, like they are a part of the Communist Party. They are communists themselves. Like they're they're they are engaging in what a robust uh, militant labor force would be able to do if they had the power to organize, which they do. Are you aware of the right-wing links between Trumpism, Modi, BJP, RSS? Yes, I am aware of the right-wing links between uh, Modi and Donald Trump. <sighs> anyway. Um, the government does not want that. Nevertheless, the farmers are still joining the protest. Uh, SKM's uh, Katyal said Monday, typically the village uh, groups work against each other, but this time they have all united for their collective fight. Additional Deputy Commissioner of Police in Delhi, Jitendra Mina, said police had deployed more force at the border. Although India's world's most populous democracy had also topped the world in terms of internet shutdowns in 2019, of course, uh, there was a, I, I mentioned this already, but there was a month long internet blackout in Indian controlled Kashmir after India rewrote the constitution to remove Kashmir's protected autonomy. Remember, we talked about this back in the, back when, uh, they made a move and literally turned around and, um, they, they made a move and literally turned around and fucking arrested like, uh, the, the, uh, authorities there in Kashmir, like elected representatives in Kashmir. Uh, it's a, a classic fascist bullshit. Uh, it's very similar to what Bibi Netanyahu is doing. It's very similar to what Donald Trump tried to do. It's just that um, when you are a, a hyper-militant, fascist, uh, authoritarian leader, you have to unite against the common enemy and also uh, continue to uh, deregulate markets, continue to destroy uh, labor unions because this kind of shit can't happen because you can't control when 250 million people get together and say, fuck you. And we are not working. We are not striking. Um, that same year, authorities shut down in and in other areas. We already talked about that. Approach is controversial. Pff, controversial. On Saturday, Mandeep Punya, a freelance journalist covering the protest, was arrested on the border between Delhi and Haryana. Punya's lawyer, Akram Khan, told CNN Monday. Punya has been... Uh, oh, oh, oh, oh. This is what I remember. Yeah, Punya has been... Rem uh, has been remanded to judicial custody for 14 days from Sunday, accused of obstructing a public servant from discharging his duty and voluntarily causing hurt and assault or criminal forces to deter a public servant from duty. They were merely carrying out their journalistic duties and another journalist was detained along him, but was released around midnight. Um, Delhi's police, uh, Minya said Punya was not carrying an ID card when he was caught in a scuffle between villagers and protesters. Minya said Punya incited the farmers and pushed police. Uh, Devduta Mokapadye of Internet Freedom Foundation said the government is using extremely draconian measures of internet suspension. Okay, it's not just the internet suspension is a problem though. Okay. We already talked about why the farmers are protesting.
Cooney got bailed, but he fucking wrote all names and accounts of fellow farmers detained in jail on his fucking leg with a pen to write a report on it later. He's golden. Um, for decades, the Indian government offered guaranteed prices. We, we, we talked about it already. There was a long-term certainty that in theory allowed them to make investments for the next crop cycle. The new rules allow farmers to sell their goods to anyone for any price, giving them more freedom to do things such as sell directly to buyers and not sell to other states. But farmers argue that the new rules will leave them worse off by making it easier for corporations to exploit agricultural workers and help big companies uh, drive down prices. What is remarkable to me in this entire story, one of perhaps one of the most uh, unique parts about this entire story is the reality that um, uh, the, the farmers themselves are very aware of the negative aspects of deregulation. Usually in America, you have workers and even, you know, farmers like this uh, oftentimes rail against government regulation and hate government regulation and say it's a big government overreach. It's the same mentality that Americans have about like, I'm a worker. I don't really deserve this fucking $2,000 stimulus check. I shouldn't get it. Right? Whereas when you have labor organizing, when you have an opportunity to educate others, uh, you can look beyond the immediate, uh, the immediate tangible benefits that you may get for the short term, like being able to, uh, like being able to sell to a private business that is going to pay a pretty penny up front and ahead of time, and and remind yourself that the the uh, private business will fuck you over in the long term. You see what I'm saying? You can't do that, and you can't get so many people to organize without some sort of centralized uh, command force, I guess. Huh. İstanbul'da gerçekleşen olaylara bakacak mısın? Baktım bile ona. Um, I, I covered what's going on in Boğaziçi uh, two days ago. But farmers argue that the new rules will leave them worse off by making it easier for corporations to exploit agricultural workers and help big companies drive down prices, which is exactly what's going to happen. They could sell crops at elevated prices if the demand is there. Conversely, they could struggle to meet the minimum price in years when there is too much supply in the market. The laws have been so contentious because agriculture is the primary source of livelihood for about 58% of India's 1.3 billion population. And farmers have been arguing for years to get the minimum guaranteed prices increased. They are the biggest voter bloc in the country, making farming a central political issue. The government held rounds of talks with leaders of more than 30 farmers unions that are opposed to the laws, but the talks have gone nowhere. As in, the government did not listen to the leaders of the farming uh, unions. 58% of the country, 30 fucking farmers unions are able to mobilize or more than that, probably, but are able to mobilize 58% of the country. Uh, that's fucking insane. Well, not mobilize in the entirety of 58% of the country, but at least like 200 and fucking 50 million people. What about the Gerudo revolution? You cover it. Dude, come on. Don't make jokes. Is that is that a fucking Zelda reference, dude? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get the Zelda in a little bit after this. Okay, chill. Last month, India's Supreme Court issued an order putting the three contentious law uh, farm laws on hold and ordered the formation of a four-member mediation committee to help the parties negotiate. But former leaders have rejected any court-appointed mediation committee. Oh, at least 147. This was the number I was looking for. That's the reason why I clicked on this link. At least 147 farmers have died during the course of the months-long protest from a range of causes, including suicide, road accidents, and exposure to cold weather. And authorities, of course, have not given an official figure on protests or deaths. But the fascist Indian uh, party and the fascist Indian police are beating the fucking living shit out of protesters who are largely peaceful protesters. I'm assuming there's some... There is going to be, uh, I, I, I'm sure this has already happened, but 
certainly uh, there there's got to be some fucking uh, uh there's got to be some car a kind of uh like movement that occurred that the government is using to justify violent action by the way i i don't know if i can show this fizz uh, there's probably blood in this like i'm sure something has already happened in which the government said well look there's violence here these guys are actually not peaceful they're actually violent to justify further uh beating the shit out of the protesters. That the police did nothing to stop them. हम यहां चुपचाप लंगर के सेवा कर रहे थे लंगर पका रहे थे सब्जी पका रहे थे हमें नहीं पता उनकी भीड़ क्योंकि हम तो अपना काम कर रहे थे जब हमने देखा भी पुलिस के साथ रलकर उन्होंने हमें पांच मिनट में ही ना उन्होंने यहां आ गए सीधा हमारे लंगर के सामने और पथराव शुरू कर दिया हमारे लंगर के कोई आठ दस सेवादारों के सिर पर चोटें लगी हैं किसी के पैर पे किसी पे हाथ पे हम तो शांत में ही थे ना हमें तो कोई हल्ला गुल्ला नहीं किया लेकिन वो पुलिस के साथ रलकर उन्होंने पुलिस भी ला ला के उसके खड़ के खुश हो रही थी और हमें पत्थर वो मार रहे थे लेकिन हम शांत में यहाँ अपना काम कर रहे थे पुलिस ने अथरू गैस के गोले भी हमारे ऊपर दागे पहल उन्होंने की शुरू भी उन्होंने किया और उनको कुछ नहीं किया और हमारे लोगों पर अथरू गैस के गोले छोड़े गए और हम तुम देख सकते हो यहाँ पत्थर अभी भी पड़े हैं ये पत्थर दे देखो वो गमला भी उन्होंने पोट का उधर से मारा जोर से और छत के भी देखो कितने पत्थर पड़े हैं छत के ऊपर वो देखो नीचे नीचे को पड़े और उधर भी फटा पड़ा है बहुत पत्थर है ये भी बहुत जख्मी हुए पड़े हैं और उधर हमारी रोटी पकाने वाली जो मशीन है उसको भी तोड़ फोड़ की है उन्होंने आप बताओ हम क्या करें हम शांत में धरना भी नहीं दे सकते I think these guys are class reductionists, sweaty. It seems like they're not being patriotic enough by protesting the patriotic government. Time to cancel these farmers, dude. But injuries recounted the events. I'm gonna write an article about the um the the aggressive masculinity of six who uh, don't shave which is uh, violence in and of itself i think aur uske baad police wale unhe pakad ke leke mere paas lati charge ki aur mere is nishan sahab ne jo main pehna hua hai yahan pe kamar ka sa aur yahan mein lati charge hui thi main bach gaya fir bhi to uske baad kuch aagu gaye mujhe chhudane ke liye mujhe chhuda ke laaye hain theek hai ji बहुत शद्दर की ना मेरे पर फैंड चार्ज किए इन्होंने और उसके बाद जो उन्होंने आर एस वाले और बीजेपी वाले मिले हुए थे और मेरा वीर है इनके पर भी पथरा हुआ मोदी दी बीजेपी एंड आर एस डिक्लेयर एनीवन दे डोंट लाइक अस एंटी नेशनल दे हैव डिक्लेयर द मेजॉरिटी पंजाबी सिख सिख प्रोटेस्टर्स इज सपोर्टर्स ऑफ खालिस्तान अ सेपरेट स्टेट फॉर सिख्स द इस्लामोफोबिया इज आल्सो रैंपेंट इन इंडिया एंड इंडियन इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ ग्रोइपर्स आर इनक्रेडिबली रेसिस्ट एंड कलरिस्ट टुवर्ड्स साउथ इंडियंस इन मेनी वेज इंडियन चड्स आर फार वर्स देन अमेरिकन चड्स वेल इट्स इट्स ऑलवेज अगेन एवरीथिंग इज बिगर इन इंडिया it's always going to be on fucking steroids. Wait, do people actually think that? Um no, I was being sarcastic. I was just applying like applying both lib reasoning as to why this is bad and then applying like conservative reasoning as to why it's bad. No one is talking about it because they are not farmers. They are terrorists who are trying to divide India so that China can take over our vulnerable, broken nation and make it a Chinese colony, much like USA. Sit down, you fool. We are not selling our nation like you dummies. Says Kangana Ranaut, artist. Oh, God. Alexa, play Diamonds by Rihanna. Oh, yeah, Tattoo. I took over my account in August last year before it was a team fan page. Oh. He's a crazy person. Tattoo shithead. Okay, I like that. She's a huge Bollywood actress. Dude. The problem with movements like this is that like good luck getting these dudes' point of view. 
when the internet is fucking already blocked, when the the most like forward facing or outside facing communication from India is going to be not coming from fucking farmers, but instead, you know, celebrities and shit that uh, you have uh, learned about or hear about. Especially in a country where there is gigantic income inequality, uh, like India, you are only going to hear about it from shills for the BJP. And even like American Indian, uh, some American Indian celebrities uh, that talk about shit like this uh, oftentimes will take like a very, very pro Modi approach, which is surprising to some. Wasn't it Priyanka Chopra who like literally fucking said uh, w uh, during the, the Kashmir stuff? Yeah. Uh, Priyanka Chopra was like during the Kashmir stuff, like in support of of Modi, partially because they're dumb as fuck, and uh, I mean, think about it: like American celebrities aren't super well versed in American politics. You know what I mean? Um, also, notorious flag being raised clip isn't wasn't actually a Khalistan uh Khalistan flag, but or is it Khalistan flag? What is its significance? Inspired by the idea of Khalistan in reality, it was quite different. The original interpretation of the protesters act comes from Bagel Singh, the Sikh general who had hoisted a flag at Red Fort after emerging victorious in his conflict against Mughals. Like, why are they fucking triggered by this? Oh, because they're gonna they're gonna run the uh, separatist narrative. Okay, so this is what they will. So, when protests like this happen, where people have legitimate grievances, those in control that are being protested against will find a way to dilute the movement. And make it seem as though the people are acting out of um, some other reason beyond, like, literally, we need to continue to survive by farming. They will have to reframe it. Uh, it happens with the Black Lives Matter protests where they say, well, these guys actually just hate cops and they're violent terrorists. And in a similar capacity, I assume, part of the way to attack this protest is by saying, this is actually a terrorist separatist group. Uh, it's the same protocol everywhere around the planet. The Indian media is the worst. Arnab Goswami, the Tucker Carlson of India, had this had his WhatsApp messages exposed, which proved he was framing his coverage purely based on directions of the Indian government. Nobody in the media talked about it. Yeah, the media is, again, uh, both in America and also in uh, every other fucking country of the planet, under a capitalist organization of the economy, the media absolutely works as the the uh, the pillar that holds and normalizes uh, government actions. They will justify it. They will... Uh, everyone says their media is the worst. I mean, yeah, it's because... Media is relatively reactionary, depending on where you are, no matter what, because their job is to, their job isn't to be honest brokers of the truth. Their job is to uphold whatever the fucking truth that the, the uh, current uh, powerful people want you to believe is the truth. <laughs> She's insane. I feel so elated. I don't remember so being so ha happy, excited. The cancer in the body of this nation we were looking for has been located, identified, and now the process of eradication will start. Dude, yo, yo, what the fuck? Yo, this happened during Kashmir too. I swear to God, bro. It, I don't know if it's like English as a second language uh, shit, even though like Indian people are very, uh, Indian people are basically fucking first language English speakers too, as a consequence of, uh, you know, colonialism. But whenever... Whenever fucking Indian celebrities write about what's going on, it literally reads like if you translate it to German, it's just Nazi shit. Straight up. Like, straight the fuck up, dude. They literally, every time, I was, I remember reading like Indian celebrities talking about, uh, talking about Kashmir and like the way that they were covering uh, the eradication of the Muslim scourge is fucking nuts. It's the BJP cell script. 
For me, being a privileged Hindu from India, I can acknowledge that RSS and BJP have made it a living hell for the minorities and any dissenting voices considered anti-national. You need to have a look at Arnab Goswami. He is the worst clown in Indian media. <sighs> it's all just garbage propaganda and i assure you it's not a translation issue everyone is so aggressive about the way bjp exists in the country is sickening no my favorite thing was like they were doing the the uh the fucking like hyper militant hyper nationalist like israeli line of defense on india when i tweeted about it a little bit immediately and again this was back in uh, back when i was covering the kashmir stuff immediately people that fucking retaliated were like wow your anti-Indian racism is showing right now. It's like, what? It's like, it's like immediately being like, oh, you're, you're criticizing the IDF or the hyper militant, hyper nationalist actions of the Israeli government against Palestinians. You must be anti-Semitic. It's literally always the same. It's a BJP IT cell that has changed the atmosphere of the country. I'm from India and before in 2014, this wasn't rampant. India media is like American media if every channel was Fox News and CNN was way smaller and even more establishment. So it's like Turkish media. Actually, Turkish media, I feel, I feel like it's changing. Also, ironically, the most left-leaning or the most liberal uh, institution in Turkey is, is Fox News. I'm not even kidding. The Turkish Fox is like the most lib uh, fucking outlet in Turkey. No, but like, they're not the same Fox. Like they're not. Indian YouTube is worse and they've aligned some of the content with Q2. Indians are super racist towards Indians. It's so insane to me. Uh, almost like a fucking uh, historic caste system drives a massive and well-identified and sometimes racialized. How else would I do it? A class system but a caste system. It's literally called it. I don't know what else to... I don't know how to analogize caste system. I Usually, you say the American racial hierarchy is reminiscent of a fucking caste system. So it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to... It's hard to use that as an analogy when that is the analogy that other people use. It's the caste system. Do you think Biden is going to listen to progressives and do things? What? No. How does the Indian socioeconomic structure compare to the American structure? Is one more underdeveloped than the other? <laughs> Dude, yes. It's not even a question, dude. Like, again, every fucking thing that you experience in America is, again, on steroids. India is significantly less developed than the United States for obvious reasons. Again, colonization, colonialism, uh, being a, a big burden kind of does that to a country. And also uh, their geopolitical uh, uh, weaknesses. What do you think will be the biggest win of progressives get between this? I don't know. It's not just the caste system. There's plenty of different ethnicities in India, and there's a lot of resentment from places like Tamil Nadu towards the north because for decades the government tried to force Tamils to learn Hindi in school. 
problem with that is enforcing other ethnicities to speak Hindi is another form of cultural supremacy from Hindi speakers as well. Yeah. Indian caste system is a fascist structure somewhat like what Hitler would have forced on Europe with Scandinavians at the top and, and Italians at the, and at the bottom, Slavs and such. Yeah. The untouchables would be, I guess, Jewish people and um, the disabled. And Caste system is breed within the Hindu religion. Where I am from within India, most people do not even think about it. Funny though, like you mentioned, India is vastly underdeveloped, but their laborers seem to know their rights better. Well, it's a consequence of being vastly underdeveloped that their laborers seem to know their rights better because professional, like, uh, there is, there isn't as much impact, uh, through financialization of their marketplaces or, or financialization in general. There isn't as much as it, there isn't as much an impact of, of, um, of professional, professionalization of their labor force, I guess. Like, our labor force is completely fucking segregated. It's totally separate from one another. Uh, people live in islands. They, they don't recognize their, their fellow workers. They don't recognize that we all have the same fucking interests. Uh, and that we could unite along those lines. Whereas if you are... If you are literally a fucking farmer, and no matter what, even if you're competing with another farmer... You understand that, like, this is what you do, and it's going to be significantly worse if a corporation takes over the purchasing process. That's part of it. Uh, that's one theory as to why uh, a, a second, like, red revolution might not ever happen in the world as it stands, because uh, there is no, uh, like, we don't have that same kind of... Uh, labor organizing that was easy to create in a factory floor uh as a con in the aftermath of the industrial revolution <laughs> if it's so bad why is the u.s the strongest country in the world well part of the reason why the united states is the strongest country in the world is because it keeps other countries down and ripe for exploitation. Another part of the reason why the United States is the, well, the strongest country in the world is, again, not necessarily the happiest country in the world, or rather the country that takes care of its citizens the most. The United States is not very good at that. That's why when, we're, when I was covering West Virginia earlier, uh, you saw people uh, living in absolute, like, desolate, horrific conditions. So what good is being the strongest country in the world if you can't even take care of your own fucking citizens? What are you going to do, dude? You're going to put that GDP in your ass? Huh? Can you eat your GDP, dude? Is that going to is that going to put food on your table? No. Yo, let me rub some GDP on my fucking uh, problems, dude. Yeah, I know. I got back pain. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, I'll just go through the MRI and I'll pay for the I'll pay for the MRI bill, which is gonna be like a thousand dollars, and even more than that if you're out of coverage with the GDP. I'll just rub it on the doctor's face. Yeah, okay, you got back pain, bro. Just put some GDP on it. You'll be fine. School shooting happened again? Aw, oh, dude. Just, it's fine. GDP. Anyway.
Why does everyone want to go to America then? Because if America is the fucking playground bully and literally beats the shit out of other countries and takes all of their resources, if you're from the other country, it's better to fucking try to get into the country with all the resources. Also, not everybody wants to come to America, dumbass. I did. I love America. That's why I'm here. Despite the fact that uh, so many conservatives consistently say, you fucking hate America, commie. Three ways the Indian government suppressed Sikhs in Punjab. One, lost land. Punjab was reduced from 58,000 square miles to 19,000 square miles. Since 1947, the central Indian government has specifically attacked Sikh agricultural rights through uh, lost resources. Today, Punjab's electricity and around 5 trillion gallons of water have been diverted to neighboring states. Lost life. 100, 100 to 150,000 Sikhs have been killed in India through government-organized genocide, disappearances, and shootings. Holy shit. These farmer bills are a small part of a larger genocide against Punjabi Sikh culture. Stop vilifying the Sikh struggle to get approval from India and the West. Why do you love America if you disagree with its fundamental system of capitalism as well as its governmental system, not to mention historical aspects? Um, porn. Zaddy Daddy, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. This is a bit much. It's corruption, not genocide. I don't know, man. I think 100 to 150,000, uh, regardless of, of India's size overall, is still pretty fucking genocidal. Hey, hey, Sikhs, it's a bit much for you to consider 150,000 people, uh, 150,000 of your people dying to be genocide. Sorry. You know, it, it's usually around the 200,000 range do we start to say, oh, yeah, it's, it's genocide. The 1984 anti-Sikh riots alone uh, accounted for the mass murder of Sikhs uh, to the tune of 17,000. The 1980... I can't believe I'm saying 1984, but yes, in the 1984... Uh Okay, this is the last thing I want to watch on this. For more than a month now, thousands of farmers have been protesting on the outskirts of the Indian capital, Delhi.
The Singhu border has become the epicenter of the protests. Old and young, men. Sorry, it's not riots. It is genocide. Tumba Man is correct. It's similar to what the fuck happened. Like, it's like saying, um, it's like saying the bombing of Black Wall Street is just a race riot. It's not a fucking race riot. It is a targeted, deliberate, specific attack against a minority population, oftentimes led by or overlooked by the the majority run uh, government. And women who continue to brave the bitter cold and rain and refuse to back down. I'm Rupa Jha, and I've come to spend a night at the Singhu border. I'm not here to debate the laws which have angered the farmers. I'm here to simply understand what keeps them going. Islam, Islam can't be erased, by the way. Half the chat thinks these dudes are Muslim. Just like, literally, they're like, oh, the fucking brown guy, beard, turban, Muslim, obviously. Right? Joginder Singh is a former soldier in the Indian Army. He says he is unfazed because he has fought battles in much harsher terrains. We are in the hillside. We are in the hillside. By the way, the 250k number comes from uh, the uh, numbers uh, compiled by the Punjab State Magistrate and Human Rights Groups and apparently reported in the book The Politics of Genocide by Inderjeet Singh Jaiji. I don't know if I'm saying it right for that person who was wondering. I don't look, I'm not like the most well versed on this, so I, I, I might be giving uh, some information that is not fully accurate. So I, I have to, like, I feel like I need to read 11 books to be able to, to understand the nuance of this. So all I can do is interpret what is going on through the same lens that I analyze uh, most news from. Yeah. जो राजा होता है परजा का माँ बाप होता है सारी का वो अपनी परजा को ऐसे सड़कों पे देखकर उसको दुख नहीं आता वो राजा राज काबल नहीं है In September last year, the government passed three farm laws that loosen rules on how crops are produced stored and sold. The laws allow private players a greater role and that sparked farmers' fears that they will lose decades-old concessions and be left to fend for themselves at the mercy of the free market. So on 26 November, farmers from Punjab and Haryana Thank you, Zaddy Daddy, for the 22 wrong gift stuff. They clashed with police firing tear gas, but that did not stop them laying siege to the capital. Women too have joined the protests since then. Suranjit is the first woman to have come from her village. Oh, Rosie looks fucking dank. Since November, the protest sites have turned into mini settlements. At Singhu, where I am, farmers wake up at the crack of dawn to prepare meals for themselves and all those who have gathered in support, regardless of religion, caste, or gender. Bro, you still find a dude who's horny for Entire that. Families it's wild. The protests. It's and wild. In the middle of all this, there's still a dude who's gonna gachi hyper a bunch of 
a bunch of fucking Sikh farmers uh, showering in, in the river, okay? Remarkable. Remarkable. The, the lengths that people will go to to be, to be horny. The college-going children of farmers. Some of them say they are struggling to keep up with studies. At Singhu, you keep hearing that it's not just a farmer's protest, that it's collective resistance. For all India, for all India, for all India, for all India, for all India. और हमारे कल्याण का तो कुछ नहीं सारे एक एक के बन के ग्यारह होते हैं सभी इकट्ठे हुए तभी ये हुआ है कल्ले के तो बस की बात नहीं There have been reports of farmers dying during the protests so in honor of them no celebrations were held on new year's eve but protesters do have a wish list for 2021 हर साल जब नया साल आता है हम कुछ ना कुछ उम्मीद रखते हैं ना तो हम चाहते हैं कि इस साल जो नया साल है सब लोग खुश रहें उसमें और जो किसी को कुछ चाहते हैं उनके हक की लड़ाई जो लड़ रहे हैं लोग उनको उनके हक मिले हमारे विरासत में था जैसा भारत सोचते थे कि सब खुशहाल हो बेगम पूरा जहाँ पे कोई गम ना हो वैसा भारत हम चाहते हैं What's the objection to the new laws just got here? It's uh, enforced. It's forced uh, deregulation by the government that is uh, causing a lot of fear uh, within the Indian farmer movement because they do not want. because they do not want the they do not want big government uh, big business to to come in and and dictate prices anyway um boys it's uh it's ad time but it's also time for another uh thing and that other thing of course is But before we even get to the ad time, it's time for fucking Zelda, baby. 